Last month, I did a best of Steam video for September in which I used the criteria of minimum 80% user recommendations with a minimum of 300 user reviews to determine the top performing games on Steam for that month. And today I'm going to be doing the same thing for October as a lot of people found my first video really helpful. Before we start though, October hasn't been an overly exciting month for releases on Steam and we're going to start this video by quickly listing off the free to play games that meet the criteria as free to play games tend to have a much easier time getting recommendations. Disturbed is a free-to-play interactive story game in which you play as a struggling farmer managing a failing farm. It's one of those games that give you multiple choices, it has a text-based narrative and a hand-drawn art style. Not really my kind of thing personally, but maybe something worth checking out to kill some time. Blameless is a first-person adventure puzzle game and short story where you play as an architect investigating strange occurrences set in an unfinished house. The game takes around 20 to 60 minutes to complete and actually looks quite good for a free-to-play game. It also has a voiceover from your character, story progression via exploration and a mysterious atmosphere. Escape the Game is an intriguing, story-rich indie platformer where you play as a square called Kevin who's sick of being inside his game, so it's your job to help him escape. The game has a vibrant and minimalist art style and was influenced by games such as The Stanley Parable. If you're looking for a light-hearted platformer, this one's probably for you. Accounting is an indie adventure game that requires a VR headset to play, and despite the game's title, it isn't actually an accountant simulator like you'd imagine. The game contains cartoony graphics, violence, gore, suicide, and tax work. I'm still not entirely sure what this game's actually about, but it seems like an interesting game to look into if you have a VR headset. Tiger Knight Empire War is an early access third person strategy PvP MMORPG. I was initially going to cover this game in a first impressions video, but I hated the user interface and menu so much that I decided to just scrap the video. The game has an interesting combat system in which your attacks are modified by mouse movements, and you play as a general that controls soldiers whilst also fighting enemies yourself. The game has the potential to be rather good, however it still needs a ton of work. Shadowverse is a card game. It's kind of similar to Hearthstone, however with a more eastern and anime theme. The game does have a much smaller board size than Hearthstone though, which only allows for up to five cards on deck at a time, as well as no legendary card limit. There's also different story modes which reward you with arena tickets. Oh yeah, it also has waifus. So now let's move on to the non-free-to-play games. Zup is a simple, cheap and minimalist physics puzzle game about exploding blocks. The game has over 40 levels, 110 achievements as well as some free DLC. Not much else to say about it really is there. Aragami is a third person stealth game that I covered last month and enjoyed a lot. It has stylized graphics, an eastern theme, and a rather straightforward story. The thing I love about Aragami is that it's a true stealth game in the sense that if you get hit once, you're dead and have to start over. And I really like that as in some other stealth games you're allowed to get away with being caught, alerting the enemy, and taking damage, which gives you the feeling when beating a level that you didn't truly beat it, but I don't really get this with Aragami. It's a nice amount of challenge from the outset, it's well paced and has great potential for speedrunning. Shenzhen is an early access simulation game about programming, where you'll build circuits, write code, read manuals, get to know the characters at the place you're employed at, as well as design your own games and devices in a sandbox. Once again, not my kind of thing, but if you're really interested in programming, maybe you'll find it interesting. Endless Space 2 is a turn-based strategy game in which you lead a civilization taking its first steps into interstellar space. You'll need to claim star systems by building outposts, collect resources and luxuries, as well as build space fleets to defeat enemies as you watch real-time space battles unfold. Endless Space 2 seems like a bit of a thinking man's game, and you'll spend most of your time looking at menus figuring out what to do next. Five Nights at Freddy's Sister's Location is the newest game to arrive in the Five Nights at Freddy's series. The game changes things up a bit from the repetitiveness of the previous games by making each level completely different and also adding voice acting. Many fans of the franchise claim that Sister's Location is the best game in the series so far due to the added variety, but personally I'd rather inject myself with washing up liquid than play this game. 
Thumper is another game I really enjoyed last month. It's basically a violent rhythm game in which you play as a space beetle chasing a giant mechanical head from the future. The controls are very simple, yet the game remains fun by introducing ever more difficult mechanics and progressively more hypnotic visuals. It's a very stylish game that I continue to play to this day. Just a warning though, it's not something I'd advise playing if you're prone to headaches or eye pain, as it's a very visually demanding game and should only really be played in short bursts. Shadow Warrior 2 is an action FPS with RPG elements and was a game that blew me away for the first few hours I played it. It's got fast, fluid and impactful gameplay, great visuals and a funny main character. It's a game that really grabs you by the balls initially and allows you to become entranced in slaughtering hordes of demons with many different weapons. As the game goes on however, you start to realise that the looter-shooter RPG path the game has opted for has more of a negative impact on it than positive. It's takes you out of the action too much, putting you in menus in order to keep up your damage numbers, and lessens the impact of your weapons by having you worry about the numeric values and stats attached to them, rather than just enjoying the bloody weapons for what they are. It's a great game, but it could have been so much better. Serious Sam VR The Last Hope is an early access action FPS game that you'll need a VR headset to play. As with most Serious Sam games, you'll be fighting hordes of enemies, have access to a ton of guns, fight across diverse environments and take on bosses. Unlike most VR games, it has realistic graphics and seems like a rather immersive experience as long as you've got a setup that'll run it. My Summer Car is an early access driving simulation game that I wanted to make a video about until I remembered how crap I am when it comes to car mechanics. In this game, you start with hundreds of loose parts and need to assemble both the car and engine. Once you've done that, you can load the car with beer, customise it, go for a drive, go for a relaxing boat ride on the lake or just chill at home. The game also features AI traffic, rally events, support for steering wheel controllers and permadeath. If you're a true through petrol head, this is the game for you. Farming Simulator 17 is the latest game from Giant Software's Farming Simulator series. You can drive over 250 agricultural vehicles, harvest crops, take care of livestock, and basically just pretend you're a farmer. The game also has co-op multiplayer up to 16 players, as well as the option to download mods. Not really my kind of thing, but if you're a fan of plowing things, then maybe give it a try. Subsistence is probably the most unique and innovative game on this list. It's an early access survival game with crafting and building. What's different about this one, you ask? Well, honestly, I'm not too sure. You can build a base, mine ore, chop trees, farm stuff, survive against bears and hunters, deal with hunger, temperature and thirst, clove your character and NPCs can level up. As of making this video, the multiplayer part isn't released yet, so it's pretty much just a solo experience for now, and hopefully it won't be in early access for over three years like many other similar games in the genre, but I wouldn't hold my breath too much on that. Hide and Shriek is a game that was released specifically for Halloween. It's basically just a one vs one multiplayer jump scare game where you need to find and scare the other person, with the twist being that you're both invisible. Quite a simple game really, but probably not going to be relevant again for another year. Oh Sir The Insult Simulator is basically a British fighting game, but instead of using physical attacks to defeat your opponent, you use witty insults. In this game, you can combo together insults to get criticals to outwit your opponents, either against your friends or against AI. The game has five characters to choose from and succeeds in being funny without trying too hard. Certainly a game I'd recommend if you want something light-hearted, cheap and fun. Meadow is essentially a spin-off game by the developers who made the Shelter games. It's essentially a multiplayer forum for players to meet up, hang out and go explore. In this game you can play as many different animals, communicate via emotes, use sensors to track other players in the world and collect skins. If you own any of the previous Shelter games you also get bonuses in this too. And that's it for all the games in October that meet the criteria for this video, but I feel as though I should mention a few other big releases that came out in October that didn't make the list. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2 was really close to making this list, but the complaints many people are having with the game about bugs, unbalanced fights and a bad PC port brought it just outside of my criteria. 
Civilization 6 is another huge game that released this month, receiving a ton of praise from critics. Surprisingly though, fans of the series don't seem to be enjoying it quite as much, with complaints about it being a step backwards from the previous game, annoying enemy AI, poor pacing, and some features from the previous games being removed. I haven't had the chance to play it myself yet, but Civilization games usually get better over time with more updates. Mafia 3 was a big release that fucked itself rather hard on day one by releasing the game with a shit PC port that was eventually fixed a few days later. I thought the game was okay, the storytelling and cutscenes are where it really shines, but the gameplay itself doesn't feel overly fun and visually it looks like a PlayStation 2 game in some places. Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 are two games that didn't make this list purely for the reason they're not on Steam and therefore can't meet my criteria. Regardless of that though, these are two games that I've really enjoyed. They're both quality FPS games with fantastic online multiplayer gameplay. Titanfall 2 has by far the strongest campaign out of the two of them, however Battlefield is better in terms of straight up immersion, visuals and feeling of a large scale war, whereas Titanfall 2 is more of a Call of Duty style FPS but miles better than the trash that is Infinite Warfare. Despite neither of these games being on Steam, I'm certain they'd both meet the criteria for my video if they were. But that's it for the top games of October guys, if you haven't seen it already, I made a video like this one for September and plan to keep doing these once per month, so do give it a like if you found it helpful. For those of you that are new to the channel, my goal on YouTube is basically to help you discover quality new games and avoid the bad ones, whilst not wasting a whole lot of your time in the process. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, then please do consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, you take it easy and I'll see you again really soon.